Well, that wraps up the Rockwell Denmark Sail Grand Prix and what a weekend we had. We didn't have any racing on day one, but boy, did day two make up for it. The key stories for me this weekend were the Kiwis going back to back for two wins and the Australians missing out on their first final this season. Let's check out all the action from this weekend. Taking center stage in the capital of Denmark is the Rockwell Denmark Sail Grand Prix as the most exciting and competitive sailing league comes to town. Oh, perfect timing from the New Zealand boat. Peter Burley makes it three for three. Hometown heroes, a Danish. New Zealand Sail GP that takes the win here in Copenhagen. Two in a row for the Kiwis. Tom Slingsby and his Australian team are still holding first place on 36 points, but those Kiwis with a back-to-back -back win are in second place on 32 points. Denmark has snuck into the top three as they sit in third on 28 points. Canada is still in fourth, but the big loser is Great Britain, who has dropped down to fifth overall after not racing this weekend. France will be happy after making their first podium, and they are in sixth overall. United States still sits in seventh, and the eighth and ninth place overall has switched with Switzerland sneaking into eighth and Spain sitting in last in ninth place on 11 points. It's been a really unfortunate weekend for the British team. As you can see behind me, they are already all packed up. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do any racing this weekend, so those points are really going to cost them in the overall ranking. So they have, did do a fair bit of damage when they hit the bottom. Not only have they damaged their foils, but they've also done a lot of internal structural damage. They've actually got a time run to Santa Fe to make sure that they are ready to go with an operating boat for the start line there. Let's head on in, see if we can look at some of the damage and maybe grab someone to talk about the incident. Challenging weekend for you guys, obviously disappointing pointing not, not to even get to the start line, but how's all the repairs going for saint -Tropez? Yeah, it was um, ahead of a weekend, a lot of work for, for no racing from our side, but we're covered with spare parts. Um, on site, we had spare board, rudder, rake ram assembly. The only thing that was holding us back was the daggerboard case, which CellGP Technologies have one on in stock. So we've got that coming to saint -Tropez, so we'll be ready to go on the water in saint -Tropez. Awesome, well, thanks so much and good luck with uh, putting the boat back together. Thanks very much. Now this is actually their damaged foil. Now as you can see here, there's cracks all the way up the side and then severe damage where it isn't in the case. And then on the bottom side, there's also so many scratches. So not only this is damaged, but the internals where the dagger board sits in their hull is also damaged. So they got a, a big job to get ready for Saint Tropez. I'm here with their head of the wing department. Um, you've had a big weekend. Yeah, we had wing chasers every night, every day. Um, yeah, we've been chipping away on that from 24 to 29 from 24 back to 29, very busy. Are you happy that you um, with the choices that you made? Yeah, it was the right way and it gave us also good practice to make it quicker and quicker. And with choice yesterday, with a call after seven, with the freshest weather report, I think that was the right call. You rely a lot on the weather because it takes a while to change all the wings, right? Yeah, but we also improved that quite a bit. We changed the bolting pattern and do it all now from the outside. Um, I think it was three, three and a half hours last night. Really good. What's the hardest part about changing the wing? We've got to take all the flaps off and then shuffle it all around in the little tent here, which is pretty busy, hectic with five wings in it. Well, thanks so much. Let you back, get back to work. Yes, thank you. We just spoke to Jan, head of the wing department. He yeah. said he's had a busy weekend, but I think you guys have had a pretty busy yeah, weekend I too. I think I take the cake over Jan, but um, no, I think today was a really good day and kind of saved the week. A lot of frustrations around the place and damage, so. Today was a really good day for the Sail GP and everyone as a whole. Do you have to build a few more spares now everyone's using them up? There's a lot of spares and broken parts being repaired at the moment. There's a lot of quick turnarounds between events, the, ne the next couple. How long do you guys take to actually put all this together and pack it all up? Uh, generally we have five days um, to get it all up and running and two days to pack it away. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into that five days of uh, calibrating all the boats, putting them together and getting them ready for sailing. And how frustrating is it for you if uh, someone gets damaged out there? Well, I think it's frustrating uh, for them as much as it is for us. But um, that's the game we play. And uh, as long as at the end of the day, everyone's OK, that's the most important thing. And we have such a good team that enjoy fixing things and they, they're the best in the game. So uh, they actually enjoy it. They enjoy the challenge. Thanks for chatting with us. Cool. Thank you. Good luck with the pack up, eh? Cheers. <laughs> see ya. As you can see behind me, the Spanish team are cleaning their boat and getting ready to pack it up. I know it was a super disappointing day for them. They didn't have a great day, couldn't get off that start line and really lacking that aggression after some tough races this season. Spanish team, it's, it's all about team, right? 
Yeah, we have a great vibe on board and I feel like that helps us deal with anything, the good and the bad, so we're always in it together. Sailing is tough at the best of times, but out there looked pretty tough today. Yeah, it's challenging. I mean, I'm facing the wrong way, but I didn't see many boats behind me, so that's never a good sign. What were the pinch points for, around the racetrack for you, uh, your team today, do you reckon? Uh, the starts are critical. I think we see that every event. You've got to get off the start line in good shape and then down to the bottom. From there, it can be easy sailing or it's hard work at the uh, back of the pack. We'll, we let, we'll let you keep scrubbing her and uh, packing her up, but thanks for chatting. Thank you. Now, I just popped into the Swiss tent to see if anyone was around, but it looks like they're still craning out. But it was an interesting weekend for them. They had a new driver and they did technically move up from ninth to eighth overall. I think it was a pretty tricky weekend to be a new team, so let's hear what Nathan had to say in the mix zone. We were fighting for good positions, but ultimately just lack of time in the boat as a group. You know, penalty here and there as well kind of cost us a few points, but. I think overall an improvement from previous events and a lot to, to review and get ready for the next one. I think for Seb's learning and development, having the two of us at the back of the boat, having the discussions and sharing the driving around the track, um, ultimately is going to pay off in the long run, but it'll take a few events for us to be really competing in the top three. So the Canadian team, they finished sixth overall at the event this weekend and they're still in fourth overall. So they're hanging in there, but the points are getting really close here at Sail GP. Let's go in and have a chat and see how their weekend went. What are you up to? Oh, you know, just undoing an F50. <laughs> just, uh, you know, the fun work. This is the fun part of sailing. The glamorous side. Always glamorous in the sport of sailing. How was your weekend on the F50? You know, it was really fun. Uh, I learned a ton. Obviously, we, uh, we're competitive sailors, so we're a bit disappointed in our results this weekend. But uh, lots of learning points for the new team and coming away with a lot of things as well. What was the hardest part about today? Well, for me personally, crossing the F50, I've got a couple bruises on my legs. Um, so just kind of learning the G-forces. But for the team and the racing, the hardest part would have been figuring out the wind and the pressure of the racetrack was, was the most challenging part. All right, well, I'll let you get back to it, but thanks for chatting. Yeah, no problem. See ya. See you next time. As you heard, a bit of a disappointing day for the Canadian team. I also spoke to Phil earlier in the mix zone. We had a pretty a difficult day, I'd say a bit of a character building day, but um, yeah, we just didn't get off the line at all in any of the races and sort of stuck in the pack and yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a tricky race track when you're a bit stuck back there. So the American team, they finished fifth at this event. They did have a good day though to start things off with the second place, but then looks like around the racetrack they're really doing well in some places and struggling in others. So let's head into the tent. You guys started off with a bang, in the, well, almost a bang in the second race, yeah. the first race of the second. Chasing them down, I think, making gains. We definitely feel, felt really strong, strong as we have all season that first race today. So we were, we were pumped about how it went. Look like a lot of things are going well for you, but just like one thing can really, um, you know, send you to the back of the fleet these days. That's how it is out here, you know. There's, there's nine good teams on the line, and uh, anybody who's going to get their nose out in clean air is going to be long gone, as you saw today. And, um, the teams that are in the back are clawing forward all the time, so you can't give anything away to them, that's for sure. Awesome to see you, and good luck with the pack-up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate see it. You. See ya. I also caught up with Jimmy in the mix zone, so let's see what he had to say. Well, look, we had uh, we had one good race, and I thought we had a couple of good recoveries. Probably the biggest issue today was we, we had a very difficult time getting the Mark 1 in decent shape. It was just really fast and action-packed racing. Hey, hey. Oh, you guys had a bit of a tough day? Uh, yeah, it wasn't great. It was tricky out there. Um, very shifty, lots of overtaking lanes and we've got a few things right but plenty of things wrong so yeah, just didn't make it through. So anyway, there's always next time. How hard was it a gr as a grinder for four races in one day? Um, that was alright but I think the, tr like the puffy conditions make it harder for sure. Your workload sort of increases a lot when the boat starts to get unstable and yeah, certainly as you're, uh, you get unstable and you're crashing down, your, your energy levels have to double to give them enough power. But um, yeah, it wasn't an easy day. You had a bit of a race uh, before the start with the Royals. What was it like? Mate, it was awesome. We're happy. We got it over the line first. And you know, the first thing he said was, well, I steered that whole reach. And she's like, well, I did too. So yeah, it was good. We're happy to take the win. That was the only win we got of the day. So <laughs> we're happy. You'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. I also chatted to Tom earlier in the mix zone, so let's hear what he had to say about today's racing. The last fleet race was a battle. It just felt like everyone was out to get us a bit. Uh, unfortunately, 
we got caught up with the French who uh, knew they had to get some points in between us. And then when we sort of felt like we were getting clear of them, uh, the Kiwis who probably don't want to see us in that final race joined the fray and got a penalty on us. Uh, yeah, it just felt like we were fighting everyone from every angle out there. So um, yeah, well done to them. They, they did a good job and they sent us back in the fleet and held us out. On to the next one. Fortunately, it's a quick turnaround and I don't have to think about this one too much and uh, can try to get some revenge next time. And now let's go talk to the team that knocked them out of the final, the Danish GP team. Okay, so the Danish team, the hometown heroes of this event, they came third overall in the event, but they're also third overall in the standings now. So is this the new and improved Danish GP team? Now, let's go in and have a chat to see what they're putting their success down to. Third overall, you moved up in the overall standings. How awesome is that for you? No, really awesome. Obviously, the final is something we need to work on and then get better at, but now, but now we're happy with the podium here in the home event and the old world doesn't really matter until San Francisco, so we just want to make sure we keep improving and, and so we can make it come when we get to San Fran. What do you put the improvements down to uh, for your new success? Oh, I think it was just a matter of time. It was a bit the same with the Kiwis. We always knew they are going to get there. We just, it just takes time to get into this boat and some of the other teams have more time and that's why they're ahead of us, but they're still ahead of us, some of the other teams. We just need to keep working hard and looking at data and they will come. Well, let me get back to the debrief in just one second, but how was the home crowd? Oh, best ever, wasn't it? Um, maybe I'm a bit biased, but what a, what a support we had all weekend, and we're super happy, and uh, we're glad we could pay back with a good result. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, and uh, I'll see you in Sancho Bay. Thank, Thank you. I spotted the driver of the French team. I'm sure he's pretty happy with himself making it into his first final. Quantum, before you go in your tent, congratulations. Thanks, Lisa. How happy are you? You made, made your first final, all that hard work paying off. Yeah, I mean, it's super happy, like, it's, it's a special feeling for sure, and, and we work pretty hard to, to achieve it, so really good, yeah. Is there anything that stood out to you, the difference for this weekend? Uh, not really, just trying to, to keep pushing and try to apply our plan. Uh, we did it pretty well today, and uh, starts to be consistent, and, and I feel really good with this. You've almost been uh, sailing the F50 for a year now. Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I began uh, last September, I think. So, yeah, first. And next event, Saint-Tropez. Uh, I'm sure you're gunning for that top spot at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. I think we will have a, a huge crowd in Saint-Tropez and also, yeah, a, a huge fleet on water. So, I mean, our sailing culture is pretty, pretty strong in France. So, yeah, we will, we will work hard to, to perform well and, and to make uh, happy faces. Well, I think you moved up the leaderboard and you've got plenty of events to go, so good luck and keep going, eh? Yeah, thanks, Lisa. I'll see you. Enjoy, see ya. As you can see behind me, the French team are packing up and the next time we'll see this tent is in Saint-Tropez. Now let's go chat to the Kiwis. How cool was it to do back-to-back -back wins? Yeah, it was amazing to do back-to-back -back wins and yeah, probably um, even more special to have a clean sheet this week. Uh, yeah, there's not many events you win uh, winning all the races, so it's uh, definitely a pretty special one considering the fleet. Did you leave the dock today thinking, okay, let's go out there and get four wins? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, strategy's the same as always, you know. I'm uh, just trying to go put together three solid races and get through to the final and then um, you know, give yourself a chance, and uh, we definitely did that, and it was uh, yeah, really pleasing to see the way we're progressing. You also had Liv on the back, um, back with the team this weekend. How did she go out there in a tricky racetrack? Yeah, well, Liv's been an amazing part of this team, you know, right from the beginning, you know, along with Joe and Erica, you know, we've got an amazing, amazing squad there that's um, rotating through and, you know, they all contribute so much between events, which is, uh, yeah, pretty special. You guys going to celebrate hard this win? <laughs> yep. All right, see you later then. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Well, we heard from Pete, he likes four races in one day with four wins, but we'd like to hear from you guys at home. What did you guys think of the four race day? Let us know in the comments. Well, we've nearly finished the debrief, but first I got to eat my words because my predictions were a little bit off this weekend, but I got the one that matters right, and that was that I predicted the Kiwis were going to win this event. And well, that's it for the Rockville Denmark Sail Grand Prix. What a weekend it was, and I'd love to hear what you guys thought in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we will see you in Saint-Tropez.